Many of you have been asking me to create more content on George Michael, so that's why today I've chosen to discuss one of the more interesting topics concerning Wham. Over the years, many have looked back at the duo's music and said that it was nothing more than 80s pop rubbish, which has frustrated me, though I can see where this sentiment stems from. Just look no further than Wham's huge hit, Wake Me Up Before You Go, Go, or even Credit Card Baby. Those tracks are a bit silly and shallow lyrically. However, that doesn't mean they all are. So that's why today, I wish to jump to Wham's defense. Looking at several numbers which I believe demonstrate the overlooked genius of Wham. Young Guns. The instrumentation is spectacular, although I wish to mainly focus on the lyrics. And this goes for the next two songs I'll be discussing. Lyrically, Young Guns tells the story of a guy who is worried that his friend is becoming too committed to a girl. But in return, all you could say was hi, Dodge, meet my fiance. He believes his friend should instead be enjoying his youth. In a desperate attempt, he reminds his buddy of the fun they used to have, expressing how he doesn't want that to go away. I remember when we used to have a good time, partners in crime. Near the end of the single, tensions reach their peak. The girlfriend urges her boyfriend to ditch his friend. This results in a vocal battle, with the line, get back hands off, being repeated. Not only is the meaning of this track ingenious, yet it's also specific lines such as death by matrimony, and wise guys realize there's danger in emotional ties. It's brilliant. Freedom, one of if not my favourite Wham! single. When I first heard this song, I instantly fell in love with it. This was mainly due to the exhilarating instrumentation, along with George's amazing vocals. I always assumed the lyrics were shallow and didn't serve much of a purpose. However, I couldn't have been more wrong. It's undeniably one of the duo's best tracks lyrically. The upbeat instrumentals only hide the true, saddening meaning behind the number, and in that respect it reminds me of songs by ABBA or Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. But why are the lyrics so upsetting? Well, the track consists of a man telling a woman that he wants her to fully commit to him, though she fails to do this, as we hear with lines 3 and 4 of verse 1. This frustrates him, as he is deeply in love with her. And as for the word freedom, it reflects how the man wants this woman to only share her love with him and no one else. Over the course of freedom, he becomes more and more frustrated. He goes on to say that she is hurting him, although things don't seem to change, and it sounds as though he may have given up on getting her freedom. As the outro just repeats the line, I don't want your. It's truly a shame. Here's another track on Make It Big, Everything She Wants. Right from the beginning, it's obvious that this song isn't about joy or happiness. This is mainly heard through the number's tense yet moody sound. The lyrics describe a man who will do anything for his materialistic partner. No matter how hard he works, she is never pleased, and due to this, he is left asking questions. Wondering why he even does all this for her, when he feels he gets nothing in return. By the time we get to halfway through verse 2, to add insult to injury, it is then revealed that she is now pregnant. This results in him losing it. Girl, 
Much like freedom, the issue is never resolved. It ends with him once again asking questions. And that's the saddest part. You would expect a pop group to end a song with the problem being worked out. Although, that is not the case here. Alright, Edge of Heaven. Of course, lyrically, it's superb. George Michael said that he wrote the lyrics to be overtly sexual because no one listens to Wham lyrics. The instrumentation, which we will be focusing on, helps to complement the harder-edged lyrics. This is especially apparent with the number's awesome guitar solo. The single was released just before the band split with their farewell concert. It's apparent that the track is unlike anything they had done prior. It's in between the bubblegum pop sound of Wham's other tracks and the start of Michael's solo career with Faith. Due to its more sexual lyrics and overall well edgier sound, it reflected how George Michael had outgrown the upbeat image of Wham. In addition, the horns on this number are astonishing, helping to further communicate the song's more aggressive sound. Edge of Heaven is celebratory, which is fitting considering this was one of the duo's last songs. It's all inclusive, particularly with how it begins. It's no wonder why Andrew Ridgely has expressed that Edge of Heaven was his favourite track to perform live. The single is simply great. In conclusion, I hope looking at these songs has given you a greater understanding when it comes to the overlooked genius of Wham, if that be with Freedom's saddening lyrics or Edge of Heaven's spectacular instrumentals. There are numerous other Wham numbers that also showcase the duo's underrated brilliance, so please, I recommend you dust off your old Wham records and give them a listen, you may be surprised.